Okay, guys, uh, this is going to be a video, a quick video on in circuit uh, EEPROM reading. Uh, we're going to focus on this chip here. This is the ECM. Uh, this is a 93C86 chip. And um, I'm just going to give you some couple of pointers on reading uh, chips, EEPROMs mainly in circuit. Um, one of the main things you're going to have to first look out for is um, you might not be able to tell right away, but if you look at kind of like the reflection right here of the light on the board as I tilt it, you you might notice there's actually there's a gel coating on this entire board pretty much, right? It's kind of to prevent water intrusion and things like that corrosion. So uh, that same gel coating is actually on the chip and the pins. I don't know if you can kind of see that I started scraping it off on the first three. So that's important. So if you have problems reading in circuit, it could be a chance you have, you're not making contact because you might be using a clip and you might be on the actual gel and not making contact with the metal, right? So let me show you on the microscope what that looks like. So here we are at the microscope. Let me get it in focus here. Okay. So, um, I got my tweezers here just to show you how fine they are, the tip and the point, right? You can kind of get an idea how fine the tip is, and you're going to see it under the microscope. Okay, let me show you. Um, yeah, that fine tip, that's what it looks like under the microscope. Yeah, they're a little bent right now. I use them for a lot. But um, as you can see, this gel coating here could be causing you problems as well. So you got to make sure you scrape it off and you're able to access the bare metal, right? And like, for example, here we go. We're gonna kind of peel it off here on this leg. You see that? So you wanna make sure you clean the legs so that you actually have access to make contact with the uh, pins, okay? That's step one. Another thing you wanna look out for is your pin one identification, okay? A lot of times you're gonna be able to find that on the actual chip a lot of times there will be a small dent or a uh, dot on the chip to designate pin one. And it would be like right in the corner, right? Uh, this chip does not have that. So in another way they do it is a um, the chip is beveled, right? So there's going to be, you're going to see the chip slanted to one side. And that tells you which side is pin one. And this chip is actually not that um, aggressive on its slant. Uh, a lot of times it'll be more pronounced, but you can see it's on this side to the right side, right? It's, uh, the, there's a slant. So that would designate pin one. I can also tell pin one by the, um, the traces basically coming off of the pins. Um, or I can tell rather where's, uh, pins on this. This is a 93C86 chip, right? Um, I know on pin, um, five is ground just from my experience, and um, pin 8 is power, right? So I can see here, and I also know that the two pins between them are pretty much not used. So you can see there's a trace on both sides, right? So that would be pin 5, and that would be pin 8, which would make this one here pin 1, right? So the pinout goes um, basically from 1 in the corner. Um, sorry about the bad angle and everything. This thing is small one in the corner and you you read up so it'll be one two three four and then five would be here then it starts going down five six seven eight so this would be eight so this is basically a drawing of it so you can see what i mean so there we are with pin one two three four and then it flips to the other side and as you can see five is our ground and eight is our power so and you can see there these two these two right here six and seven are not used usually, so um, you can see that uh, it was branched off to a capacitor here at five and eight. So one side gave power, the other side was ground. So that's how uh, also I could identify on this chip where is pin one. So that would make pin one on that side. Okay. And when using your clip, you want to make sure you don't have any any debris, you know, on the pins so that they can make uh, contact with the metal. And um, basically it takes a little practice. It's not something you just put it on there and it's gonna you're gonna get it because you've got to know how to line it up and you've gotta be basically focusing on hitting um, both sides of that chip so that it's even, right? And you also wanna always be 
con um, mindful of where this red strip is on the cable. That red strip designate pin one, designates pin one. So you wanna make sure, like right now, I've actually got it backwards. As you can see right there, and remember what I told you about, uh, there's uh, five and eight. So I've actually got it backwards right now. So if I did that, it wouldn't work. So I need to flip this to make pin one be right there, right? Because we know there's pin one right there. So that's another important thing. You also want to be mindful of your legend on your programmer of where the pin one goes, right? So on this end, we've got pin one here, the red stripe. So we need to be mindful that it's mounted on the programmer the same way as the legend shows pin one there. And so there we have it, pin one, as you can see, it's on that far side, which would make it there at the top pin one. And this was the APA 103. Now, I've already went ahead and put the clip on the chip to where I feel uh, I'm making good contact. And you've got to just, this is just trial and error to get it on there right. Uh, there's no easy way besides you just kind of want to focus on the two outer pins to where you're looking at and try to make them meet. Because once those meet exactly centered, then it's pretty much going to center the other um, eight, six rather. All right, on IM608, I'm going to use it for this. We're going to go to chip. You can do this on the PC as well. Uh, just right here, easier for me right now. And we're going to select EEPROM. And we can do Atmel 93C86. 93C. And this is 86. EEPROM. And let's see if I get lucky. Always uh, also make sure... You've got your, um, yes, your verification to on and on. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit later on to you what uh, the voltage is for, why you might want to change this. As it says, changing this might damage the chip. Um, so we leave it at the default at 5 volts right now. You don't really want to mess with that unless you know what you're doing. I'll get into that a little bit later. And now we're going to try a read. Let's see if I got lucky. And if not, we're going to try to reseat the clip and try it again. It's going to read it because we have our verifications on. And it looks like we got good data. Um, that was the first try. Like I said, that's experience. That's why. Literally, that was my first try putting it on. Um, as you can see what I did, I cleaned the pins. So I would probably bet that this data is good because... It read this twice, uh, exactly the same. So I would be, as a betting man, I would say, yeah, this data looks good. Um, to read all these bits twice, um, if there was an error, there would, in one of them, it would fail. So um, one of these bits. So I would say it's pretty good. All right, I'm going to save this. Name it. All right, I'm going to save that. And um, as you can see, that's it. I read it in, in circuit, but don't get fooled. All of them are not this simple to read in circuit. Some of them uh, will not read like this. Even though you have the clip on properly, it's always going to fail. The reason is uh, it varies from board to board, chip by chip. Um, sometimes as when you connect the clip and you attempt to read, you're actually applying power to the chip to wake up the chip so that you can communicate with it. Well, this chip is in circuit and that power also can flow backwards and it can reach the other modules uh, like the MCU, activate that. Now the MCU is active and the first thing the MCU is going to do is possibly try to communicate with that EEPROM and you and the, and the MCU are trying to communicate at the same time, bam, you're going to get a failure. So that is a lot of times what can be happening, right? Also, um, sometimes on the serial side, there could be some issues going on as well, which is the um, transfer side, right? So um, what I do uh, in a lot of cases, if if you do not want to pull the chip as an alternative, right, um, which can be a bit more a bit safer because applying heat to the chip also is can be very um, damaging if you don't know what you're doing and you spend too much time on that chip, you can basically fry it. Um, so what I do is actually I would lift the leg. I would first start with the uh, in a chip like this, which would be the power, the power leg, which would be the VCC, right? 
and um, that would basically remove the power from the circuit and it would allow the power to only flow to the chip and not to any other components on the board and at that point if it was related to uh, possibly waking up or um, or power leakage or something like that then you've now kind of isolated that issue right okay I just wanted to show you a quick example of a bad read right I uh, switched to a different board and same chipset and everything I put the clip it read one time it's gonna read again and verify the data and it matched but if you look at this data it's completely blank because the chip the clip is not seated properly so even though it read this data twice and it matched doesn't mean that you actually read good data or data at all as you can see we read absolutely nothing so it matched nothing both times right so you got to be mindful of that as well guys okay here's another tool um, you probably might want to get to be able to read uh, EEPROMs in circuit I'll have the link in the description of this guys um, basically what this allows you to do this acts as basically some they basically have a hook at the end and they will grab one of the legs of the uh, chip right so you put that on each relevant leg and you attach a cable to the other end and into your programmer and that's a secure method versus the clip where you can have maybe something not seated right all the issues that can happen with the clip this would eliminate those problems the only deal is it's a little bit more tedious to uh, you definitely probably might want to have a microscope to get on to be able to view everything good and set the uh, clip in the right position these uh, pins in the right position so here it is at the end I connected the cable and as you can see if I push it see the little pliers the little grip hook that comes out and that's what you use to grab onto the chip so you can see just how small that is so I'm going to show you that on, on the uh, microscope so I've got one here that this the headache clip is giving problems to read I'm going to get rid of that and here we are under the microscope so you're going to see I'm going to now uh, attempt to put the first um, lead on so I'm now pushing it back and here's the clamp so it's clamped on and I just give it a little bit of a wiggle kind of make sure it has a good connection we're gonna put on the second one now and same thing and if you notice there's actually a plastic um, coating over the edges of the uh, these leads so that'll that prevents them from when they actually do touch they will not short between them so I'm putting on the third one now and um, and now we're gonna put on the last one sometimes they kind of uh, I make sure you put the cables on them first because you don't want to try to put the cables while these are in place they're a little bit delicate and those prongs are very easy to bend like this last one um, I've got it sideways so if you notice once it's sideways it might not actually get a good grip so you got to kind of spin it and make sure you get it on there straight as you can see it just pulled off right there so just gonna kind of try to straighten it out so it's kind of horizontal and get a better bite on that and that's it they're all on we're gonna do the other side now okay so you got an idea how I connect it up and um, the next thing is to plug it up to the programmer so the other end of the wire you're gonna plug it into the programmer on this side right and I made a little legend for me. You can do the same. It just, uh, I have very bad memory, so it helps me remember stuff. So I know uh, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? That's how it's broken out at this, um, on these pins here. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys. Um, I went ahead and hooked it up and following my map. And as you can see, pin eight is by itself there. And on the other side, if you notice that, let me see if I can show you. Being that these two middle traces are not used, I did not have to pin them up. You can follow the trace here, and you can see for the ground in 5 and the power in 6 VCC, those are the two I hooked up to. All right, now that we got the troublesome clip out of the way, go back to the uh, programmer, and now let's try to read. And look at that, 
we got it and it read everything fine on the first try. So sometimes the clip can be causing you some grief, right? So that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to save this one and finish my job what I'm doing here. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, the video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to split this up to part two. So we're going to do on part two, we're going to do this EEPROM. This is a Dodge ECM, um, and it's a Atmel uh, 25, um, 25320 uh, EEPROM. So uh, with this one, it will not read in circuit, even if you use the uh, pins. So we're going to use some different techniques, advanced techniques to show you how to read these in circuit. Uh, so uh, go ahead and um, click the thumbs up button, guys, um, and stay on for part two. And remember, boys, like I always say, if you didn't know this, now you know. And knowing is half the battle, boys.